Hi, this is Dr. Susan Purrs back with some more interesting facts from my book, my ebook, Conceiving a Peaceful World, which is available on all the ebook readers. So, I wanted to talk with you today about one of America's great military heroes, veterans. Um, his name is, is Smed, General Smedley Butler, Smedley Darlington Butler, real person. Um, he achieved the highest rank of general possible at the time and received 16 medals over 34 years as a Marine, including five for heroism, two medals of honor, and the Marine Corps Brevet Medal. <clears throat> he is the only Marine ever awarded both the Brevet Medal and two medals of honor for separate acts of bravery. Smedley Butler served in the Philippines, China, he was in Central America and the Caribbean during the Banana Wars, and he was in France during World War I. Notes Wikipedia. Um, during his retirement, General, General Smedley Butler um, had become very, very popular. He was a, a war hero. He um, was very well respected and very well known during that period of time. That at, During that time, uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president. Um, and he was, Smedley Butler was approached, this is a true story, and if you like mysteries, this is a really fascinating story. He was approached in 1934 by some very powerful um, men who were bankers and corporate um, corporate executives who um, were very unhappy with President Roosevelt's um, policies um, and they wanted to take over the White House and install a dictator. A, uh, they wanted to try to um, discredit Roosevelt and make it look to, to the, the quote-unquote dumb public that he was not capable of leading and install um, a general secretary to basically run the country. The book by, this book by Jules Archer, The Plot to Seize the White House, um, tells the story in detail and it's a fascinating read. It's a very fascinating read. Um, so, um, Smedley Butler was first approached by um, a man named Jerry Maguire, a representative of this elite group, um, <clears throat> and they first asked him to make a speech at a veterans convention, supposedly in support of veterans, but the actual text of the speech was more about returning America to the gold standard. Um, and um, Roosevelt had moved the United States off the gold standard to try to put more money in circulation um, to try to help the country recover from the Great Depression. Um, but that was a threat to business interests of financiers and bankers, notes Archer. They were, these um, corporations and, and financial officers were equally appalled by FDR's speech six weeks later promising that the U.S. would send no more armed forces to Latin America to protect private interests. See, at that time, the United States had sent um, troops to uh, Nicaragua and a number of other countries to protect uh, banana companies and um, a lot of American business interests. And Smedley Butler, in some of his writings, are also well worth reading. Um, he's written, um, it's not very long, it's, an, it's a long essay basically, called War is a Racket. Uh, he basically says war is a scam, and after um, <clears throat> spending 34 years of his life as a very um, honored and honorable, brave and courageous veteran, he came to realize that his life was spent protecting um, the corrupt interests of 
corporations um, like the banana companies, like Standard Oil, and, and he specifically names different corporations. In his essay, War is a Racket, he describes <clears throat> in very poignant and powerful terms not only the very specific ways that bankers and corporate executives get rich from war, but also the devastation that occurs um, in the lives of soldiers, uh, not only those who perish, um, but the suffering that they experience during war and the suffering that they experience afterwards. He visited many veterans hospitals. That was part of his um, mission and his service after he retired um, to visit veterans um, hospitals <clears throat> and to try to stand up for veterans interests because veterans um, not so different from today were coming home with severe injuries with severe post-traumatic stress he describes in very poignant terms um, how men were in their spirits and their emotions were broken from post-traumatic stress and what that does to people and how difficult it is to recover from that. People do recover, but especially when um, efforts to assist soldiers are limited financially and not properly funded by the government. Those were issues that were happening then just as they are now. Um, so I think, you know, he he, he became very, very um, passionate uh, about the idea that war is a scam and that it benefits bankers and corporations, but all it does is, is devastate the public, devastate the lives of soldiers and their families, their, their children, their wives, their mothers, their sisters. Um, and brothers, their family, um, and um, how it destroys communities, how it destroys infrastructures, um, where it occurs, of course. Um, and his conclusions are completely in line with the research that I did. I did um, literature reviews studying all of the major wars in the United States and none of those wars were ever actually about what the American people were told they were about. They were always about corporate gain. Many of them were about oil, even as far back as Vietnam and Korea and before that, there was always, oil was always often, I won't say always, often uh, a part of the issue. Um, and corporate gain, and it, it's very shocking to realize the level of corporate corruption that's been going on for 200 years. Um, and, and the push by bankers and, and corporate executives to go to war because of the Im massive amount of profit that they make. And he actually documents that in very, very quick and easy terms. Um, before and after the profits of probably about 25 different industries during World War One, before and after the war, what they made before the war, what they made during the war. Um, and it, it's, so it's a very concrete way of seeing the amount of profit that occurs. Um, <clears throat> so I hope that you'll take a minute and look up one of America's great veterans and war heroes, Smedley Butler. Um, I think it's a way to honor veterans because he certainly did and he fought for the rights of, of veterans after he retired for them to have help reintegrating into American society, for him, them to have medical benefits, for them to have better pay, for them to have the things that they need, the medical care to recover. Um, he's a great American war hero. He had tremendous integrity. He was um, in terms of his service to America. And I think his words um, will probably never die. They're, they're well worth reading. So I hope you've um, enjoyed this little um, excursion into American history. And I hope you'll take a minute to read some more about Smedley Butler. 
He is a man to be remembered and a man to be honored. Good to be with you. I hope you'll take a minute and look up my book, my ebook, Conceiving a Peaceful World. It's on all the ebook readers for $9.99. I also have a blog, drsusanpers.com. And um, I'll see you next time. Take care.